This is a thing that we're doing. I spent money on this. You did. I okay. haven't. This is what happens when you want to start making serious videos or more serious videos. And you start with me. And no one answers your DMs. So I had to go with this. <laughs> so this is the best we can do. So you got my name in class for good here, right? Uh, yeah, no, that was it. That was all I needed. Okay, we're, cool. we're... I got into racing because my dad had, I guess he either drove by the area, there used to be a, BM, a BMX track in Seacaucus, and he had seen kids with like number plates and helmets and gear, so he kind of, I guess, did a little bit of research and kind of figured out what was going on at the time. But unfortunately, by the time we started in 2001, the track in Seacaucus closed, so we never actually got to ride there. Your amateur career was um, maybe quieter than some of the more high-profile pros in the sport. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, I didn't have, I don't, unfortunately didn't get a national title or anything like that, but I did have national 10 twice for like 15, 14, 15X, and I had a national 8 and 16X. But I mean, of course, you were always quick. It yeah. wasn't like you were... I was always in the main, in the mix, but just couldn't quite get that national title. turned pro when you were 17. Yeah. Which it, nowadays is not that common. What made you decide to turn up so young? Um, I think I kind of always just wanted to race in the pro class. And at the time, around 2012, 2013, most of the people I was kind of riding with were pros. You had like Phil Delizia, Danny Smith, who were some of the top guys in the sport at the time, for at least for A-Pro. They were just kind of, you know, always in the main events and podiuming. So and I was fortunate enough to be able to, to ride with them on a regular basis, so I just kind of seemed like the right move at the time. I was trying to think of a way to do this, because I, I think it best tells the, the story of you and Pro, and I don't at all mean this in a bad way. You haven't had the easiest time at it, I think is the best way to put it. Like there was the time in Delaware when you podiumed. McCorry, Phil Lizia, one and two, followed by the 294 Phil Bone. Is it rolling on at you? It's McCorry, Udelizia, into the corner they go, bring it back. And then the next day you fell and broke your ankle. There was the time. You got landed on. There was the time you got landed on in South Park, which I don't have footage of. Then I got hammered, Jamry Smith back tire. In Ohio, I don't have footage of that either. Bam! Hey, slaps down. We're going racing. Look like Hudson got the pop. I got Phil Pro trying in his hip pocket. So there was a race in Chesapeake where I won the first main event, and then the next one, my chainring bolts were loose, and I kind of just settled in for like a third. And yeah. then, like, yeah, I think you got a second in the third main or something like that. I remember that. I think I got two second places that weekend. And then there was the one in Louisville. You got second place behind, I think, Will Grant. I got second place in the moto, and then I think I got some sort of cramp or something locked Hold up. Muscle or, or something. Yeah, something weird. Or something. But the point of where I'm getting at is, you know, I guess, what keeps you riding in A-Pro? What keeps you riding in A-Pro? I've just kind of enjoyed the kind of the group of guys that I get to ride with, because they're all have the same kind of mindset. They're all kind of more on the fun side of it while it's still competitive and everyone's still quick and stuff, but it's not like we're not fighting tooth and nail to kill each other for fourth place or something. Everyone's, most of those guys all go to work on Mondays, so it's, it's just kind of a different feeling. It's 
sort of why I'm not a huge fan of doing pro-ams, because you get some kids who are 16, 17 in the amateur class and you put, you know, $150 on the line and they're, you know, one-footing you up a turn to try to get something where, you know, a pro, that kind of stuff doesn't happen at all. No one's killing each other for, for the payout or anything. Everyone's very respectful in the class. I, I didn't mean that to be like, no, I but like, like I meant to like, I, I think you belong in the class. No, I know what but you meant, it's like, the, you know, the, the unfortunate events. Of it has been, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I hate it that you've been in for so long. You don't have a heck of a lot to show for it other than you're really good at riding a bike. You know what I mean? That's all you need. <laughs> that is all you need. However, all of that uh, pales in comparison to what might actually be your biggest accomplishment, <laughs> which is, um, 2016, Richmond, Virginia, Red Bull Burn Burners, mm -hmm. which is now a world championship. Yeah. So talk about that a little bit, because it's different now than it was. Yeah, the Red Bull had a kind of a impromptu pump track event thing. It's the precursor to what is now the Red the uh, the pump track UCI, yeah. which is it's now recognized as a UCI world championship. This was kind of the precursor to that when Red Bull was putting money into it. I think they still are. I think to be fair. So I won the equivalent of like a World Cup. Oh God! Effectively, yeah. Jeez. There but you go. It, it was just a, a kind of a last-minute thing. We went down. Although it's a weird like head-to-head -head thing where you pretty much one guy starts on one side, the other guy starts on the other, and you kind of just chase each other until you someone the uh, one guy gets on the same straight as the other, and then that's the end of the race. But somehow I held on long enough to get the win. Got a golden shuffle. And a golden shuffle for twelve hundred dollars. Twelve hundred bucks, yeah. For a race, usually just try to keep my mind clear, not too cluttered. I just kind of, I don't really say much or do much. I just kind of sit in my own little bubble for a little while before we uh before i get in the gate just kind of focus on breathing and relaxing and, and trying not to be jittery and just trying to do the best i can once the gate's down i try to just same thing keep a clear head try not to do anything too drastic or too crazy oh favorite riders growing up there was a lot probably number one was kyle bennett definitely Hands down, just best, smoothest, nicest guy. Keeping on that same thread, uh, who, who inspires you nowadays? Honestly, I think it's just kind of watching a lot of people, I guess, with social media, being able to see what other racers can post online. It can be kind of seeing what some of the Dutch national riders do over there to seeing what some of the local guys can do here with the some of the crazy stuff they can do. I think it's just kind of anyone on I can see on Instagram or Facebook and stuff. You're currently riding for Chippendale's bike shop, which at least in New Jersey, BMX is, is a pretty well-known bike shop. So yeah, riding for the team's been, been awesome. We've been on for a couple years now. It's two years. Two, three years now. Um, we've known Andy for a very long time. See, he's the guy in most of the New Jersey races who has the big trailer who comes down. And... Even, yeah, Northeast will go to other races and nationals and stuff, but he's been, he's awesome, always willing to help, always got what you need at a race. Um, even just the people who ride the team, the fathers and the kids, everyone's, it's, it's a really awesome atmosphere. So I've definitely enjoyed riding for him. It's riding for a, a, a bike shop team's cool because I can literally run whatever parts I need to, even though there are certain brands on the team jersey. They're not giving me parts specifically or paying me to ride things. So even I'm, I'm kind of get the ability to run whatever bike part I, I need to, which is awesome. We'd like to take this moment and apologize to, to DK Bikes. We, we didn't know you were going to be on the jersey this year. If you give me a Zenith, I'll run it, I promise. Future Luke stepping in here. Uh, since we shot this video, I've been very reliably informed that a DK Zenith has been ordered and will probably be put together by the time this video is released. So... Um, well, the frame for this year and part of last year was on a triple XL Haro Blackout. Kind of been, for the last couple of years, been liking having the 2175 top tube. Like a little bit more space when I'm riding. Bars and forks are from 11, pretty standard, I think eight and a quarter, and just a standard 8.0 fork. 
I've had a profile acoustic stem for years. Ages. The ages. You may have had that for like it, it, five or six years now. At least it's it's been quite it's been on definitely a bunch of bikes I've had. Drivetrain's been pretty much the same except I just got a new Onyx hub because I had a stealth hub in the back I wore out after about five years. So decided to get that and plus it has the disc brake option. Teasing the update video. Teasing if that ever the, happens. the potential update of my next frame. <laughs> Box cranks, which I'm liking a lot. Gear my usually ran in, but it changes all the time, depending on what I feel like riding, truthfully. Um, HD pedals, hands down the best pedals I've ever ridden. I don't think I've unclipped out of them once yet. I think the only issue I had with them was I had the, the non heavy duty spring. And then once I swapped that out, I haven't had a single issue. I think this is my third season on them and they're still fine. Even the cleats, the original cleats I had for like two years and never clipped out once. Tayoga Black Labels, once again, probably one of the best tires I've ran. I've had these on for oh, at least a year. Rims, Sun Envies. I had Box for a while, Sun Envy. I kind of go either way. I think the Box rims I kind of liked a little better because I ran, I had one on for a couple weeks when I had my spare wheel on before I got the Onyx and I kind of liked how it felt over the sun. And then my favorite Kevlar seat from, I think from Merit BMX. <laughs> we, we don't even know. I think, it's all worn. And that is the bike. I think so. What is one thing in BMX you want to do before you decide you're done? Um, I don't know if I'll ever really be done, but in terms of taking it, trying to get to that next level all the time, I would like to try to do an elite race. Um, even if it's just one at like Pittsburgh or Nashville or something, just to say, just to get in the gate with those guys. Um, yeah, I think probably try to just get in the gate for an elite race. I'd also like to at least go to one world championship event. That would be cool which for me would be qualifying in the elite class, so that would knock out both. Yes. <laughs>